Welcome to Sorry Not Sorry. I'm Pastor Creed, alongside Pastor Cholak, and this is our Howdy. new Lutheran Apologetics uh, uh, episodes that we'll be having. This little show, I guess we're going to call it. Um, and uh, what are we going to be talking about a little bit here today? So we're calling it Sorry Not Sorry because we're talking about Lutheran Apologetics. And apology has come down in our in our uh, culture and in our civilization to really mean like you're saying you're sorry for something. Um, but we're going to note that... That's why I never knew much about it, because I'm not sorry. Not sorry, no. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I, I'm, I'm sticking in my heels <laughs> here. <laughs> um, so we want to sort of open this up and talk about what apologetics is as far as a defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without a doubt. And so we'll be, we'll be looking at Christian apologetics in particular, obviously, um, and how we can use it in our everyday life um, to defend the faith um, and, and, and also uh, how we do it in a Christian way, um, how we do it to, uh, you know, how we defend our faith in a, in a way which is befitting of a Christian. Um, and I know that can be difficult sometimes, especially if you read Luther in a, in a modern mind. Uh, he's not very uh, uh, ecumenical. He can, <laughs> or, <laughs> he can, he can yeah. without a doubt. So, you know, m maybe not the best is read a bunch of Luther and then go try to emulate how he, how he does that. But uh, well, nonetheless, we'll, we'll look at uh, apologetics and how, we, uh, how it can come into our everyday life. And I think context has a lot to do with that, too, right? Without because sometimes you can be spunky, and, mm -hmm. and it's because you're, the people you're talking to are, are a particular crowd, right? Right. Um, yeah, without a doubt. So, anyway. so, yeah, so, I mean, I think looking at this first episode, we're going to just kind of define what poly apologetics is and, and, and what we do with it. Um, and so, what does apologetics look like? Well, it's, it's not so much the doctrine. It's not about, um, you know, what we believe. Um, but whether, but, which is important, you need sound doctrine. I mean, you, the church can't function without a written and, and, and you know, articulated doctrine. Um, but uh, apologetics is not really about the doctrine, but it is really about um, the trustworthiness of where our doctrine comes from. Yeah. Um, so how is, do we know? It, how do we know it's true? I mean, are we just spouting opinions, which are so common in this world right now like I have my own truth and you have your truth yeah, find your truth I hear that and then uh, I want to uh, pull my hair out uh, okay. it's, it's uh, there is not your truth or my truth there is the truth the tr <laughs> and and so we we want to get to what the truth is and so and there are a whole bunch of things that like characteristics about the Word of God mm -hmm. and our confessions that uh, are like just anchors to the fact that their eyewitness testimonies, their truth, yeah. their drop, you know, bombs of truth. Right? Hey, without a doubt. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Here's our truth bomb. Truth bomb. We may have to, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll exchange. For today, we're going to have truth bombs. There it is. All right. Okay. So we've got truth bombs. Um, but and, and that's and that's the point too. Is is you know why why do we need apologetics? Well, you know, there, we used to live in a country in which there was a a, a underlying Judeo-Christian uh, ethic and, and knowledge, at least, that you could quote from the Bible, and that would be sufficient for for people to say, "Okay, well, th there's some truth in this." We don't live in that world anymore. That's 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 gone. Um, so uh, we have to be able to look to the truth of the Bible, and and in many ways, for the modern man, um, come at him where he's at. Um, but still with the truth, still with God's word, still with the scriptures, and showing in an in, in empirical way, uh, often that, that there were, you know, if 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 this if this witness, this this canon that we have that is scripture, you know, if if it was some other document and it was in a court of law, uh, you know, you have eyewitness testimonies, you have uh, you have these all of these uh, records, historical, or historical reference, artifacts, and backed up by archaeology and, 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 and all the modern sciences that we use, they're there. I mean, this, the Bible is you know, the, the most authentic, and, 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 and it is self-authenticating, but we also can use all of the modern-day um, you know, proofs to, to verify that, yeah, this, this actually is true. These, these things did happen, and this isn't just 
fairy tales, uh, right? Yeah, you know, made up by people, um, and so, so yeah, so so that's kind of what where the basis of apologetics goes, and and as Pastor Cholak was said earlier, you know, um, uh, apologetics comes from that 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 definition of apologia, uh, the the uh, to, yeah. to, to to defend a person or to defend a thing, to 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 and, and really have, when you think about it. Put your mind in maybe in a, in a legal, in a courtroom uh, setting, I, I think. Which is important to do in a lot of Christianity conversations, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the justification comes to mind. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you have, a, you have a lawyer named Jesus who's standing in front of <laughs> yeah. the throne of God uh, yeah. pleading for you. Yeah, right? exactly. So, so. so, yeah, and so, you know, to break the word down, you, you're a resident Greek scholar. Um, you, <laughs> Latin. Latin, sorry, sorry, Latin. Uh, so we should, we should both be Greek. <laughs> right, we are, we are. Yeah, yeah. So, I'll, so well, I'll take the first, the apo, right, uh -huh. uh, from apology. Uh, apo means from. From, right. Yeah. It's that, that, that suffix that we, we attach in, in Greek. Um, and then... Uh, Log logia is yeah. the logic. That's where we get our English word logic from. So yeah. you have an ordered fashion um, by which you attack an argument. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I think, that, you know, that's important... You know, obviously we're from our Savior. Um, we have a a classical school, and one of the co core components is, is logic. Right. We want to teach our kids how to think. Um, we want to teach our, our kids um, how to approach an argument and articulate it in a, in a fashion that isn't just based on emotion. Yeah, you mean it isn't how well I can stomp my feet and choke my arms? <laughs> well, sometimes, I mean, in the early grades, maybe that's it. We, we try to get that, we, we, we ease them out of that, we'll, we'll say that. But, uh, but yeah, but it's, it's, it's how to come from a logical standpoint and, and defend uh, the, the truth. Um, it's kind of interesting, Pastor Creed, because we have these, like, self-proclaimed truths and opinions, right? But mm -hmm. when it comes down to the actual truth, and looking at it and attacking it from a logical sort of standpoint, those opinions oftentimes you know, sort of fade away because logic's going to point us back to the absolute truth. Yeah, well, exactly. And, and it's funny because so oftentimes Christians get accused of being illogical or, um, you know, well, you're, it's all based on this, these fairy tales and these myths and, and, and it just doesn't make sense. How could this actually happen? But but when you actually, like you said, apply logic to it, this is where you, this is where it leads to. I mean, the, the scriptures are opened up and, and it's irrefutable. Right. Um, yeah. and, and so, uh, you know, that's, that's the way we, we want to approach um, our faith as far as um, defending it in, in, in that sense. And, and we do have, you know, the, the uh, the mandate from from uh, from scripture itself to be able to do this, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Peter tells us, First um, Peter three fifteen, right? Um, always be uh, what, what, what is it? Always, always be prepared to give a defense for the hope that lies within you. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, but remember, yet do it with what a gentle, a gentle gentleness and respect. Uh, respect yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we we don't. Well, this is an interesting maybe side conversation mm -hmm. for a later time, um, but. Uh, we don't break one commandment in order to <laughs> yeah. keep another one, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, honor your father and your mother has a sense, right, mm -hmm. of loving your neighbor, but when that. that respect that you have when you're talking to someone else, right? Um, especially right. someone who's older than you, which yeah. oftentimes is happening. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so you know, we and so we're we're told to do this, you know, to to be prepared to give a defense because um, we live in a world that. That we can't we can't just take it for granted that people believe the way we believe, um, especially even in our country. It used to be like I said, in our, in our at least in our country, and, and maybe your state, you know where you, you're from, uh, there was kind of a, a a national ethos that not I wouldn't say you know we were a Christian nation or anything like that in, in that sense of a, a theocracy, but there was the under uh, you know pinnings of, of the, a natural law based in scripture. Um, I think there was a much larger, like, just common biblical literacy. Well, without a doubt, without so a doubt. So these things would just pop in people's heads as they were discuss, yeah, discussing you, with their yeah, friends. Yeah, you, you, could, you could talk about, you know, Jonah and the well, and people knew what you were talking about. You could talk, uh, you know, about the parting of the Red Sea, 
or, or you know, bring up a beatitude, and even the non-Christian would be familiar with it. Yeah. Um, today, you know, you, you say Jonah, and, you know, I don't know what they think of the Jonas Brothers or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what people think of. Um, I mean, he might be the most famous of them, and still there's so many trolls. Right? It, it, exactly. And so, uh, how many times have I caught somebody uh, on purpose by saying, how many animals did Moses put on the ark? <laughs> and they're like, they, well, 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 I guess two, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so Moses what? didn't, didn't do it, didn't yeah. do it. Well, and it's getting today where you can't even do that because people are like, Moses who? They don't even, at the ark? You know, they, these, the, these biblical accounts that we've grown up with and we we just take it for granted. That, you know, we were raised in, in, you know, I was raised in a Christian home and, and I mean, as far as you, as well, knowing these, mm -hmm. uh, these, these accounts from the Bible, and, and just and even in school, I mean, we talked about it. I went to a public school, um, and we, so we talked about these things. It, it wasn't forbidden to, to, to you know, talk about God or talk about biblical things, um, and so there was just a, a common knowledge of it. There uh, seems to be now a much more uh, militant. Uh, resistance to talking about these things in, in public. Oh yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, and so that's why we need to do it. So, so you know, and this kind of brings us into you know why we need apologetics. You know, what, why why do we? Well, um, I think really uh, for for us as as Christians, you know, um, our people often ask, and, and this this you know, philosophers have spent you know millennia trying to answer, you know, what's the purpose of life? What's the meaning of life? Right? 47. 40, 47, right? <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> Whatever that means. But, uh, yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide, if you didn't know, get that one. Um, <clears throat> but go, uh, like I say, what is the meaning of life? It's not hard. Our, we are to proclaim the gospel. We are to spread the good news. Whatever vocation that you, you find yourself in, that God places you in, you are to, to speak Christ um, to people. And so for apologetics, our main thing is, is, is mission and evangelism. Why, why do we want to do this? Because we want to speak Christ. We want to tell people about Jesus and the good news of the gospel. That, that, that's, that's why we do apologetics. Well, and it's and, amazing, the, whole, the characteristic of our God anyway, is mm -hmm. that when he interacts with us, he does so with his mouth. He speaks to us. Right. And then when he forgives our sins, he speaks to us. And when he wants to spread his gospel, he doesn't just show up somewhere and start talking. He sends us to speak. Without a doubt, yeah. without a doubt, and and so we have that 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 basis for for who we are, um, our identity in Christ, and, and our meaning in life. Uh, and so we 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 go out and we spread the word. And and like I say, Pastor Cholak and I myself, we we're pastors. This is this is what we do for a, for a living. But that doesn't you know that doesn't mean when we're uh, you know when I take my collar off and go out or something that I, I don't. Want to talk about Jesus, or or if you who may not be a pastor uh, doesn't mean well, I'll let them do that. That's that's not really my my bag, and and I don't want to, you know, I might say something wrong, or I might not say that I get confused and stuff. Well, and that's that's why we educate ourselves. That's why we're doing these these types of things right now and understanding. Um, so well, and and uh, I might get in trouble for this, but I know some pastors who are like I I don't speak to anybody outside of my parish about Jesus, because uh, I'm a shepherd, and these are my sheep, and this is my my spot to go, <laughs> and it's like, well, I, I see what you mean, You're right, but, yeah, I, um, I don't know if I would live by that, that creed, but uh, um, I think we're, if we expect our sheep to go out and speak to other people, um, we, we need to be able to, to speak to other right. people, and, now, and, and, and it does, it helps us too, I mean, I, mean, I, I enjoy speaking to them. That's why I wear the collar. Uh, right. People don't mistake me for a bus driver, uh, or you know, or or a construction worker or something. It, it, they they make me mistake me for a Catholic, and that, that's always I always enjoy that because I always father sh father <laughs> father. <laughs> I'm like, how did you did you see my kids around here? They're like, what? And this this, this I'm, I'm Lutheran. It's okay. You do dad, dad jokes <laughs> even when your kids aren't around. I do. I do. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, you know, dad jokes are it's a, it's a calling in life. It may be a vocation. I, I, I have to look that. Well, up. it's apparent when you. <laughs> See, uh, good. I'm trying it. <laughs> I'm trying it here. When, uh, when I lived in St. Louis, um, mm -hmm. I took the, the uh, public bus right. to work every day. It was about a 40-minute ride on the bus. And 
the days that I wore a collar, mm -hmm. I had people coming up to me asking me for prayers, asking me questions about something that was bothering them. Oppor these kind of opportunities yeah. came up all the time. The days when I wore a, a suit and tie, everybody left me alone. Yeah, no, I was like this, like just another cog in the wheel. No one, yeah. no one matters. So yeah, well, yeah. I don't know how many. I mean, even my uh, family now they they recognize that we'll be in Walmart or or the store or something, and somebody comes up to me. They just like okay, and they walk off, and it's goes because always like, can, can you pray for me? You know, and so I was like, sure, why not? And yeah. it's always like, well, who was that? I was like, I don't, I don't know. Somebody that needed needed God's word, yeah. and and so. Well, that that uh, we're allowed to do that, you know, it, because of this, it, it opens us up more. But for the for the uh, you know the, the layman who doesn't wear a collar, um, they still people will know you're a Christian by the way you talk, by the way you conduct yourself, mm -hmm. um, and the way you live, or, or they should. <laughs> were, you, were you taught in uh, in vacation Bible school when you were a kid? Uh, they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you. you you should be comfortable speaking uh, to other people about your faith. Um, and because most people are receptive to it. Um, even though, in, even in our society that, that wants to, to look the other way or, or turn, you know, or, or can, is getting more and more hostile towards Christianity, there's still a lot of people that are, are hurting. And, mm -hmm. and God's Word heals. And so. And there are like. I would say like three, maybe there are more, but there are like three different um, ways. Like you have the ones who come up to you and say, hey, I know that you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Or can you pray for me? And you have those who you see that are in a, a moment of need and you say, hey, I'm praying for you. Um, the Lord Christ has this in his hand or something like that, just a, a passing moment. Mm -hmm. And then there are, there are those moments where you're like, I want to tell you about Jesus, and the person's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so and, there's a right spot and a wrong spot. Exactly, and so, um, and so for us too, though, you know, like I say there, there are people God places in your lives to to plant those seeds, um, but and you're getting more and more because we are in a, in a society that um, I think is very akin to to what the first Christians would have would have dealt with. There's not an assumption that anybody knows about Jesus. There's not an assumption that anybody knows about the books of the Old Testament. You know the, those those accounts. Um, in fact, and if they do know something, it's usually wrong. Wrong. Um, and so uh, we we need to come there. You know, with with as far as apologetics goes, with those hard facts, the, the truth. Uh, that's that we we are such a scientific scientifically focused, knowledge-based, you know, show me the, the facts, show me the details, um, prove, prove this to me. And, and the Bible is full of those, those historical uh, elements, um, the artifacts. The, the well, we have this, mo I, at least I keep hearing it, you can't be a scientist to be a Christian. <laughs> It's, it's like, it's like what? What? Uh, you, you mean even though science came out of uh, Christianity, like the, right. <laughs> and it was developed, and uh, well, and that's the truth um, that that this world, the world sees anyway that, that they that that religion is antithetical to science that, that they can't coexist, um, and that's just simply not the case. True right. science um, came out of Christianity, came out of Christianity, and and points us to God and confirms. What the Bible says. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, pseudosciences that don't, <laughs> and, right. and and so. So uh, you're describing a a post-Christian world. Uh, we there was a point where we were in a world that was like most, at least in the United States, we were in a mm -hmm. and, and in Europe, what we would call a Western society, right. right, or Western civilization, in a world that knew the Bible was a Christian world. The majority of everybody was a believer that regularly attended the yeah. the divine service or or some sort of service, and now we're we're in a dras drastically yeah. different. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah. We are, and there was always. I remember even growing up, there was kind of this debate: Are we entering a post-Christian world? Um, that debate's settled. We we are in a post-Christian world. If you if you don't recognize that, recognize that now. <laughs> yeah, we, we're there. We're there. There's. Um, uh, you know the latest survey came out that you know that we're becoming a, a, a minority anyway. We're about to be a religious minority in the, in, the, in the United.
United States in the next 15 years if the, if the trend lines continue the way they are. Um, which is fine, we've always been a minority in the world, um, just because we had a majority in our country, um, kind of gave us a false sense of security. Um, well, Christianity has never been the dominant view of the world. Uh, the world wants to reject it. Well, and unfortunately, too, I mean, maybe unfortunately, I don't know if that's the right word, but the Lord is like, the, the many are called, but few are chosen. Exactly. A few. <laughs> it's going to be a small group. Right, exactly, exactly. And, and that's, and, and so, you know, so when we look at, it, at apologetics and, and we look at how we engage in it, there's a couple of ways in which we can get engaged, the offensive and the defensive. Mm. Um, and You're like talking football terms. Right? There it is, right? So, yeah. yeah. Um, you, you're a big sports fan, right? I, yeah. Not football, but... Yeah, not, not football? Okay. Don't, don't say soccer. No. Okay. Baseball. Yeah. Okay, okay. America's game. But it's right. hard, to, hard to stand in the stands and go, go, offense, go! <laughs> yeah. You know, for, yeah. Usually not the way you that's cheer not, on the baseball. Team. Yeah, that, that's typically that not, unless you want to get looks. But yeah, yeah. either way. Yeah. But yeah. But so <laughs> offensively speaking, um, with the with the apologetics, that it's really that we 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 point directly to to God, right? directly to the gospel truth, and and, and we're, we're that's that's what we're doing. That's, um, that's that putting it out there, yeah. like uh, John at the end of his gospel. It's mm -hmm. like, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, yeah. the Son of the living God, and that by believing, yeah. you may have life in him. Exactly. And so, you know, John twenty thirty one. boom, that's it. That, that's offensive apologetics. Um, and, you know, and, he, and he, before that, he, you know, like, I could have written a whole lot of other things too, but I didn't, I didn't have enough space. Uh, not, right. not that I didn't have enough space. It's just, I didn't need to put all this. I put this here because this is, this is what, you know, for you to believe um, yeah. and, and God's word. It's There's a, never enough. Yeah, it, for the books. It, exactly. So um, you have all the recordings and signs of, of, of Jesus, uh, the miracles, supernatural abilities, and supernatural mm -hmm. events that took place. All of these things, we, boom, we, we, we push that out there. That's offensive. And then, of course, we have defensive uh, apologetics as well. Um, and, and so defensive is what I think most people probably think of when they think of apologetics is it's defending the faith. And that's where Peter comes with right. that earlier quote that we had from 315, 1 Peter 315, mm -hmm. always be prepared to give a defense, right? Right, yeah. To the, um, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, so that, that, that's, how, that's how we approach that. And, and if you look at Matthew 12, when, when Christ uh, engages the Pharisees who accuse him of casting out demons by the power of Satan. And he gives the, you know, Lincoln uses this in his address, you know. You mean Lincoln didn't come with this up, come up with this on his own? <laughs> no, I, or, I don't think so. Uh, it's just a strange coincidence of, of fate. No. Uh, but, you know, the house divided. Um, they can't stand. Um, and this is what he's saying, you know, I, the devil's not going to cast out demons. He needs them. Um, so, logically, it points to God doing this. Right. Um, and so he, he uses apologetics in, in that in that case um, and, and, and models it for us mm -hmm. in, in a way. And the, this reminds me of the uh, three estates or mm -hmm. three kingdoms that Christians live in. Because yeah. we live in family and we live in church, church. and we live in government or society, society. right? Yeah. And in the midst of those three realms, there there is obvious moments of necessary defense like mm -hmm. in the home it has to be this is what is taught yeah. this is what goes on right uh in the church has to be right uh, <laughs> be be uh prepared uh, to get that false doctrine out mm -hmm. the apostle paul says that's a cholak paraphrase but get the, the, get the false <laughs> But in society, we have our moments, right? Mm -hmm. Or our, our fences, maybe. Um, those areas that we, we stay in. Yeah. So without, yeah, without a doubt. And so, um, and so that brings us to apologetics and, and, and why we do it. And then, but, but, but we see, well, not everybody believes. People reject Christianity. And it's not because it's untrue. It's simply because we don't have faith. People, we reject the faith, that gift, that, and, and God's grace. We 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 turn away from it. We harden our hearts, um, and, and so it's not that the defense is weak. Mm -hmm. It's that we are um, we we are um, consumed with ourselves, with the world, with our 
sinful desires and, and everything. Like navel gazers. Exactly. Look for it. Yep. And our belly. Yeah. Our belly is our God. Exactly. Okay. And so, but that, but then that, that kind of brings up a paradox of, of apologetics and, and, and this Christianity. If salvation is totally by grace, um, it is a free gift. I can't choose Jesus. I can't choose to have faith. I can't, you know, no part of my salvation is dependent upon me. Then, uh, you know, why why do we have apologetics? And then how can how can me telling you about Jesus and defending the faith, how can that help you? If if it's all of it going to be coming from the Holy Spirit anyway, how how does how is me talking about it going to change anything? And so there's just like, well, okay, well, well, how does it? Well, we look and we say, well, it's because uh, our speaking of it, our our telling of it, the evidence is is part of God's, uh, you know, word working. Um, you know, faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God, and, and when we speak the truth, those seeds of faith are planted. It's amazing how every aspect of the Christian church and the Christian life revolves around that foundation, which is the word. So everything that God does to us in the divine service, he combines his word yep. to it. Everything that we do in our family life, he combines his word to it. Mm -hmm. um, and in apologetics, when we're, we're discussing with somebody who doesn't believe, he uses his word in order to de describe it. And when and where his Holy Spirit wills, he uses that word to create faith. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. So so there is a place for apologetics because we are... We are Christians, and, and that, that, that is what we do. We are tasked with doing this, uh, defending the faith um, and, and, and speaking God's truth uh, to, to an unbelieving world. I told the eighth graders this morning that uh, some of the things that we're memorizing and, and taking to heart, um, so the, the parts of the catechism and scripture verses and other things like that, um, are like a, the utility belt that Batman has. Right? Okay. They're yeah. different different tools on that belt, right, for different situations. Uh, the word applies to the enemies and the situations that are coming mm -hmm. to our life, and having those yeah. um, makes us prepared in those moments. So. Without a doubt, without a doubt. And and so, you know, and those are defensive moments. Right? Exactly, defensive moments. Uh, well, and, and, that, and, and ultimately, you know, and, and it reminds me of kind of, a, you know, the, the, the armor of God and all of those things that we put on that are defensive, that help us Against the world, but the you know the one offensive weapon he gives us is his word, right? right. The sort of the spirit, <laughs> and so that that's the offensive weapon that we have to go out and and, and to to go into and to yes. hostile. World. So what happens when you reach your hand to the to the uh, sheath and nothing's there? <laughs> there's no there's no sword. There's yeah. no sword. You're left. Yeah, you're left yeah. without any any uh, this type of. of Attack or, or anything or, or, or weapon, there, um, and so that's that brings us. You know, so why why we're doing this and why we why we need apologetics. You know, the goal of apologetics, and it's simply that, that you know to effectively present uh, the gospel to people, the, the saving grace of, of Jesus Christ and what He did for us on the cross, um, taking our sins, giving Him you know that great exchange, giving us His righteousness, so that when we stand before God. Uh, we don't stand as accused sinners, but as those washed clean in the blood of the Lamb. Um, and, and so, to effectively be able to do that, you have to you have to practice, you have to train, um, and you have to be uh, you have to know. Uh, Does Paul talk about this like <laughs> uh, he who runs in the race must train for the race? Right, right. And, and so, uh, we're tasked with doing this, and so that's that's why we engage in apologetics. Um, it's not to win an argument; um, it is to uh, uh, in, in a sense, you know, win someone for, for Jesus, you know, almost like that whole uh, evangelical Billy Graham kind of tent revival, you know, go win, win somebody for Jesus. It's not us doing it per, per se, but we are out there and, and playing those seeds that, the, you know, Paul planted, Paulus waters, the Holy Spirit makes growth. Right. Um, yeah, that, that growth. The growth. yeah. And, and so that's what apologetics does. And so we have this power. Uh, it, it's the power of God to save sinners. It is the power that He uses uh, to bring people to Him. And it's remarkable how our lives and the words that we speak just totally shock the world. Mm -hmm. They like, why are these Christians acting like this? Why are they talking like this? Yeah, 
Well, they it, lost their minds. Well, it's it, 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 the word God's word today. It goes against the world. I mean, it always has, um, but but it seems like today we're able to amplify that with technologies and everything else, and and and, and so much of the voices, the talking heads out there are saying, well, these Christians are. They're kind of strange ducks out there, you know. And then they're speaking all these these mysteries and myths that, of the past that they just can't get past. Um, and it's um, and so we need to be able to answer that. We need to be able to to do that. And apologetics is is really one of the the, the best ways to create a, a situation in which you can share Jesus. Um, to to be able to reach out to people and, and say, no, this is this is why. Uh, you know, this is where the hope in me comes from. Right. Um, this and, is why I'm so strange. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> so, but uh, well, I think that uh, you know that kind of uh, wraps us up for this episode. Um, and and so we'll we'll continue to uh, uh, next week. I think we're going to kind of look a little bit at the uh, specifics of apologetics, the, the four uh, four proofs uh, for the existence mm-hmm. of God. How we kind of. Uh, or four arguments for the existence of God. Aquinas has five, but we'll look at four. We, we might bring in the fifth one. We'll see. Uh, but uh, but we'll look at so for those existence of God as we go forward and and be able to uh, talk to those. But um, until then, don't forget to uh, to like and subscribe. Um, to uh, hit that thumbs up. Yeah, yeah you got to. Otherwise, uh, it's all for nothing. Yeah. Uh, it's not. It's for Jesus. It's it's good. Uh, but no, like and subscribe, and, and we'll. Uh, We'll see you next week. So for uh, Sorry Not Sorry, I'm Pastor Creed. And I'm Pastor Cholek. Have a blessed day.